Hello and welcome to the academyofworship.org YouTube channel. My name's Chris and today we get to finish out our Guitar 101 series. We've been talking about what makes up the electric guitar, all the pieces, all the things that you may want to know or need to know or don't want to know. This series is of course intended for beginners or those interested in getting into electric guitar. Today we're talking about strings. What is it exactly you need to know about strings? Strings is a really broad topic and there's a lot of things I could talk about, but as I thought about what it is that it pertains to you as a worship musician or just a musician in general, I wanted to distill down the core important stuff. First and foremost, let's talk about string gauges. There's a few common string gauges that the guitars come from the store strung with, that most people play on. I'd say the most common string size is nines. What does it mean when I say nines? We're talking about the diameter of the string. When we say the string sizes, we're usually referring to the high E string size, which is generally the smallest string on the guitar. So when I say nines, I mean 0 .009 inches. That's the circumference of that string. Now they increase in size, generally speaking, as you go towards the low E string. Every set of strings can vary depending on what the manufacturer is going for. You could have a set of nines that goes down to a 0 .042 inch circumference. But you can also have a set of nines that has a thicker low E string or thicker couple of low strings. Some players, including myself, prefer a heavier bottom on my guitar strings. So when I dig into my low strings, they don't sound as out of tune when you hit them hard. Another common gauge would be tens. Again, that'd be 0 .010 inches for the high E string. And those go down to sometimes 0 .052. They can go down to 0 .054 or 0 .056. There's custom sets you can build from scratch if you order each string individually. So I would say that nine Nines and tens are generally going to be the sizes that you see on most common guitars. Now they keep going up. You can get into 11s, 12s, 13s. I've played a set of 13s when my guitars were down tuned, which we'll get to in a second. You could even go lighter down to eights or even sevens. Billy Gibbons is famous for playing sevens and eights in his career. Why would string gauges matter at all? Well, there's a few reasons actually. One is simply player comfort. If you don't want to work that hard and you don't want to bend a string and really fight the guitar when you're in standard tuning, then maybe nines or tens are in the area that you want to be. Maybe you don't want to work that hard. You want to tune your guitar to standard tuning and you want your bends and things like that to have a light touch and so you put on some eights or even some sevens if you want to go that low. If you find that you have a very heavy touch, you squeeze really hard or you're really rough when you fret notes, those might not be the strings for you. They tend to bend out of tune really easily. However, if you have that light touch, go for it. See what you like. They're really easy on the fingers and they're super easy to bend. If you're like me and you're a little heavier in your grip, I go with a heavier string. I actually play tens and elevens. One of the bands I'm in, we actually tune down an entire step. So for that, I actually choose 11s, which brings me to another reason why you choose a heavier or lighter guitar string, the tuning of your guitar. If you find that you're playing a lot of metal or down tuned music, you're more than likely gonna wanna decide on a heavier string gauge. You're gonna have to experiment with which ones work for you if you're doing that kind of music or tuning your guitar like that. If you're, however, tuning to standard tuning, then 10s or 9s or somewhere in there might be what you're going for. But again, try them out, buy some different sets of strings and check it out. Lastly, at least for this video, we come to the material that the strings are made out of. The most common strings are going to be either pure nickel strings or nickel plated strings. Pure nickel strings are probably the most mellow tone you can get. When you go up into the nickel plated strings, they're a little more bright and aggressive. And one of the new materials they started making strings out of is cobalt. These are said to have even more output and be even more aggressive in their tone. There's even some companies that sell coated strings. Those strings have a layer of Teflon or a similar material over the string wraps. This gives the string less string noise because your fingers don't catch as much on the strings. It also extends the life of the string so you don't have to change them as often. However, they are a bit more expensive than a standard set of strings from most companies. There's some companies that cold treat their strings or do some sort of temperature treating to their strings to extend the life or to make them stronger in the long run. To be honest, there's a lot of hype around certain strings and what they're made out of. Now, I'm not here to say one's better than the other, but I will say that in my many, many years of playing guitar, a plain old guitar string without any bells and whistles for a fair price is going to get you by.
by just fine. That leads us into the very, very last point. Take care of your guitar strings and change them regularly. I would say about every three hours of playing on your strings, they probably need a change. Now you can go longer than that, but what happens is your strings become duller sounding, they don't hold their tuning as well, and they're more prone to breakage. So it's up to each individual player. In fact, there's guitar players out there, very notable ones, that tended to like older, more worn out strings because the tone was more mellow and not as bright. So just like always on this channel, I would suggest you just try stuff out. Strings aren't super expensive, and it's fairly easy to jump from one set or one size to another without breaking the bank. But just remember, the older the string, the less reliable it's gonna be. Now, I'm not endorsed in any way by this company I'm going to mention. However, I feel it's my duty to inform you that there are places out there that give you really good deals on strings. One place is webstrings.com. Again, I'm not endorsed by these guys. I'm not getting paid to say this, but I have been using them for years. And the one reason I like them is because they're cheap. They're good strings for a great price. You can buy them in bulk so that if you want to try out different sizes or different materials, you totally can. They sell electric and acoustic strings. They all work great and I've never had an issue with them. If you're a player that prefers more name brand strings, by all means, go out and spend the money. I'll just be over here with my three sets of strings for your one set of strings. All kidding aside though, go with what you want, do what you want, but try things. There's a lot more we could cover about strings. There's a lot of nuanced stuff about strings and there's a lot of opinions out there about strings. If you do a simple Google search, you'll find that there's people that disagree with what I just said, all of it. And you'll find people that maybe have more extreme views. But either way, you should know what you're getting into. And if you're a new player, what your strings are all about. Now in some other future video, I'm probably going to cover guitar maintenance, the proper way to change your strings and things like that. But for right now, I just wanted to get into the basics. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope you took something from this. I hope you learned something from it. And I hope it's something you can use when you choose your next set of guitar strings. So I leave you with that. If you liked the video, please, 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 thumbs up, share the video. If you're not subscribed to the channel and we've earned your subscription, please hit the subscribe button. Also make sure to check out academyofworship.org for your free gift and keep up over there with what we're doing. But until next time, go out there, twist some knobs, flip some switches. I'll see you in the next one.